after bringing you a comparison between the new Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro Max, several people have asked for a comparison between the standard models as well. So let's do it. This is the Samsung Galaxy S22 versus the iPhone 13. Unlike the Galaxy S22 Ultra, the Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus aren't radically different in design compared to last year's S21 counterparts. They come in what Samsung calls simple and refined colors, which include phantom black, phantom white, green, and this pink gold color, which is pretty unique and looks, in my opinion, really good. On the iPhone 13 and 13 mini side of things, you get product red, a similar pink, Midnight, which is almost a black navy color, Starlight, which is a mix of silver, gold, and beige, and finally, this deep blue color. One thing to also keep in mind is the size. So the smallest Galaxy S22 comes in at 168 grams with a 7.6 millimeter thickness and a 146 millimeter length. Whereas the smallest iPhone 13 mini is way more compact at 140 grams with a 7.65 millimeter thickness, but only a 132 millimeter length. So if you're looking for something very small, the iPhone 13 mini might be for you. Now with the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus, you get the same thickness, but an approximately 11 millimeter taller device and around a 196 gram weight. And that compared to the iPhone 13 is also bigger and heavier. But I think the bigger and heavier design is also attributed to material selection. The Galaxy S22 series has an armor aluminum build and Corning Gorilla Glass Victus Plus protection on the front and back compared to the iPhone 13 and 13 mini ceramic shield front, glass back, and aluminum design. Remember, the heavier stainless steel material is reserved for the iPhone Pro lineup. So personally, I think the S22 has a little bit more of a premium feel. Now, as far as water or dust resistance is concerned, both phones are IP68 certified. Okay, next up, let's look at these displays. Here, the Galaxy S22 comes with a thankfully flat 6.1 inch panel while that Galaxy S22 Plus has a flat 6.6 .6 inch screen. Both of these have a hole punch cutout for the front camera and are dynamic AMOLED 2X displays and come with up to 120 Hertz refresh rate. So that's adaptive. They're also full HD plus resolution. So basically just over 1080p and have a peak brightness of 1500 nits on the standard S22 and 750 nits on the S22 Plus. Now on the iPhone 13 mini and regular, you find a 5.4 inch and 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED panel respectively, again with the full HD plus resolution, but no high refresh rate. To me, having a higher refresh rate does make a difference and therefore makes the S22 display feel more premium in this regard. But if it's not something you've ever used, then it's obviously not gonna be something you miss. You also get Dolby Vision support on the iPhone display with up to 1200 nits max brightness, which comes across beautifully when watching movies and videos that support it. Now, when it comes to performance, something that both Apple and Samsung have done with these devices is to ensure that the processors inside them remain the same regardless of which device you choose. So in this case, the iPhones come with Apple's A15 Bionic, whereas the Galaxy lineup has the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 4 nanometer chip, at least here in the USA. Now to be clear, when it comes to Apple, this pertains to the iPhone 13 and 13 mini. The iPhone 13 Pro lineup has 20% better graphics power thanks to an extra graphics core on the GPU in those models. Samsung software, which is Android 12 with the One UI 4 skin is more tailored towards using the larger displays for multitasking, but it's not my favorite skin in the world. While with the iPhones, it's less of that and more about how applications and experiences are more polished for iOS 15. So iOS stays familiar 
when it comes to the home screen, which I personally don't have a problem with because when I pick up my phone, it's because I wanna get into an app and not hang out on the home screen, but that might just be me. Now, when it comes to RAM, you get up to eight gigabytes on the Galaxy devices, which is actually down from the S21, while you get four gigabytes on the iPhone 13 and 13 mini. But those are just paper specs. And oftentimes you're gonna get a better sense of speed on the iPhones. And that's not just in my testing, but just about any benchmarks you look for online. Now, one important area I know is important to a lot of people is gaming. And that's a place that Samsung has made some nice improvements. The overall gaming experience might be better on the Galaxy S22 lineup, even though Apple's A15 Bionic is a much more powerful chipset. Now, why do I say that? I say that because of the high refresh rate display, which is also capable of a 240 Hertz touch sampling rate. So when you're gaming, things will feel a lot smoother and more responsive on the Galaxy S22 with that adaptive refresh rate when compared to the iPhone 13 and it's locked 60 Hertz display. If you want an adaptive display with high refresh rate on the iPhone, you have to spring for the more expensive Pro models. Now, moving on to these cameras. I think the camera package on the Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus is more comprehensive. You get a triple camera system with a 50 megapixel wide, 10 megapixel telephoto, and 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. So you get things like 3X optical zoom and 30X digital zoom for more flexibility. On the iPhone 13 and 13 mini, there's a 12 megapixel wide and 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. And that's it. There is no telephoto as that's saved for the Pro model. So for zoom photography, the Galaxy S22 is better and arguably that goes for portraits as well, which Samsung has greatly improved on this year. The place where the iPhone will have an edge is with social media apps. Samsung has brokered a deal with Snapchat to give it direct access to its cameras. But other than that, you're gonna find using the camera in social apps to be much higher quality on the iPhone. Now the other side of the camera is video. And if you weren't aware, the iPhone has been the absolute goat when it comes to video for many years. With the iPhone, you have a Dolby Vision video camera right in your pocket with editing features built right in. You can also record in high quality ProRes, which is perfect for editors. Now on the S22 though, you benefit from features like auto FPS for better video capture overall, and you can download an app that allows you to capture raw video too. There's even 8K video recording here on the Galaxy S22 series, and it's something you just don't find on the iPhone 13 or 13 mini, but that's not really a game changer, at least in my opinion, and at least not yet. Now I have dedicated S22 and S22 Ultra camera reviews coming in, so be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those. Next, when it comes to battery, the Galaxy S22 series is kind of a letdown. You have to be careful with the entry-level model if you want it to last a whole day, and even the S22 Plus, while definitely better, is still a letdown compared to last year's S21 series. Now what's crazy is that the iPhone 13 went the opposite direction. Remember, on the 12 mini, battery life was atrocious, but the 13 mini gets better battery life than the standard iPhone 12 did, and also the standard iPhone 13 sees even better battery life compared to last year too. Now, what's interesting about the battery life is that the Galaxy S22 has a 3,700 milliamp hour cell, while the Galaxy S22 Plus has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. Meanwhile, with the iPhone 13 and 13 mini, you find much smaller batteries, 2438 milliamp hours and 3240 milliamp hours respectively. That all comes down to Apple's optimization of iOS for their specific phone hardware, allowing them to make iOS for these specific devices last as long as it does. When it comes to charging, the S22 supports 25 watt wired charging while the S22 Plus gets 45 watt. The iPhone 13 series gets 18 watts wired and all of the phones, both Samsung and Apple, do wireless charging up to 15 watts. Well, actually the 13 mini tops out at 12, but to get that speed on the iPhones, you need to be using MagSafe wireless charging. If not, then it's 7.5 watts instead when going wireless. 
Now, a few more random items. It should also be noted that with all iPhone models, you get an ultra wideband chip built in that can be used to share data and hyper location awareness for things like air tags. You'll find ultra wideband on the S22 plus, but not the standard S22. Also, all these phones support Wi-Fi 6, but the S22 plus is the only one of the bunch to support the faster and newer Wi-Fi 6E. Check out the speed test I did showing the differences between the two, as I thought it was eye-opening, if not mind-blowing. Now, when it comes to price, the iPhone 13 mini is the least expensive of all the devices talked about here at $699, while the entry-level Galaxy S22 starts at $799. $799 is also the price for the standard iPhone 13, and the Galaxy S22 Plus starts at $999, which is the same price as an iPhone 13 Pro. And once again, both Apple and Samsung have great trade-in offers, so make sure you're aware of those before purchasing either device. Links to all of them will be in the description below. Meanwhile, drop your questions in the comments below and I'll meet you there for further discussion. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards and I will catch you in the next video.